www.ebitcoinsolutions.com. Educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the July 26th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. We need to make that one little two by four ship. Well, means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, inside our Tigers, then, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. Again, I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, I got all the U.S. indices trading to the downside. Dow's up 101 points, about three tenths of a percent to the downside. S&P 1%, 37 points. NASDAQ 100, 208 points, one and seven tenths. Russell's up about 10 points, a half a percent. Semi's off 1%, 31 points. We'll take a look at what all that means. Gold is off two bucks. Silver is up 18 cents. Lights Recruit is back 85 pennies. Natural gas up 30 cents. The 30-year treasury printed out 142.03. That's up 22 ticks. Lead the charge. Dollar-wise, the upside, he got Encore Wire up 12 bucks 11 percent pagaya technology is up 93 percent that's nine bucks 3m is up nine bucks or six percent mcdonald's is up eight and change up a little over three percent biotechni corp is up by two percent or eight dollars to so the downside it's fair isaac corp off 39 dollars that's nearly nine percent palo Alto networks is up 37 bucks seven and a half percent mercado libre off 33 bucks a little over four percent tesla's down 28 three and a half percent there Microsoft, not Microsoft, I meant um, uh, Walmart. If we take a look at Walmart, we'll just switch over to this, and then we'll go take a look at the uh, charts here, some of the other charts. If we take a look at Walmart, out with earnings, big gap to the downside, but where it found support is really where the buyers are lined up, and that is it's bullish structured. This is important to take a look at. This is its bullish structured weekly profile. That bullish structure says there's support between 121.04 and 124.81. The low of the day has been, uh, what is the low of the day out here? The low of the day has been uh, 120.06. Um, and uh, 121.04 is, again, that bottom of that profile. Now, if there's a close below 121.04, that would suggest lower price, potentially suggest lower price out here. But the fall in Walmart uh, should have subsided. We have we would take a look at the other charts, see if there's any other signals out there. Okay, so we got that out of the way. Not that anybody requested, but uh, when I came out with the numbers last night, uh, I went took a look at where the profile levels were at, and uh, that just simply defaulted to that uh, page. Now what we want to do, let's uh, take a look at what's going on uh, from a daily perspective out here. So from a daily perspective, what we have, we take a look. So you've got two of the four have confirmed sell the D point or Gartley sell patterns. That's the two right-hand charts, the NQ and the Russell 2000. The Dow does not. The YM does not. It never made its uh, price objective. It, it did not get close enough to say that that is a completed pattern. Well, plus it didn't develop a bearish reversal candle on top of that, and nor did the ES Mini. So they didn't attain their uh, price projection levels, and they uh, didn't uh, generate a bearish reversal candle, as was the case inside the NQ and the uh, Russell 2000. Now, the Russell 2000 has just had a sideways move out there. Kind of interesting, but not so for the NQ. The NQ has gotten down 
to a low of, well, where's my data box? That's weird. Where is that data box? It's out here. So the NQ got down to a, a low of uh, 12,106. The bottom of the profile is 12,10488, 12,105. So you got to love that. So support has uh, hit. It has held. And now what we want to do is we want to go, and not, that we don't have that. Well, in the case of the ES Mini, you also have price pulling back to a support level. And that's this bullish structure daily profile. And that's between 38.99 and 39.28 out there. So let's go take a look at the NQ. We'll take a look at that uh, multi time frame charts out here. We'll go for the little bit larger multi time frame charts. And that'll be populated on your screen here momentarily. So we know right now about the monthly time frame. It's got that TD9 count. Uh, no, it's got a road momentum indicator top. Price is sitting right on its breakout level, 12209, we're 12158. So, um, you know, that's suggesting that over time price could get down to the 73. 49 area. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, though, the NQ's got a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. That confirmed about five weeks ago. Uh, it confirmed uh, three weeks ago again when we had a hammer candle. Uh, we've got uh, several confirmations out here of this bottoming pattern. Now, what we have going on in the uh, daily, and that suggests that what price should do is make a move up to the 14,412 level. That's its TD9 count breakdown area. And that will remain in effect unless we see a close below its weekly oscillator and change line. That is currently printed at 12.008 out here. Or let me make sure I've got that number right. 12.008 yeah, 12 is uh, the uh, current level. Now, as price moves lower, uh, that line will move a tad lower as well. But we want to see if price can get there and hold that level. The daily time frame chart. Prices may have hit the support level. That's the bottom of the daily profile. Below that is its daily oscillator and change line. The daily oscillator and change line right now is printed out at 12.061 or 12.152. So when you get down to a support area, what we like to do is if, if, if this is going to be a turn, and it could be a turn out here, what we like to see are bottom patterns on the intraday time period charts. Now, on this set of charts out here, I've just got 30, 61, 22, 40, and the five hours. So we're not uh, uh, jazzing this up with a uh, five-minute, a 10-minute, and a 15-minute chart, although we can go take a look at that. So when we look at the uh, these time frames out here, the only one right now that has a bottom signal is the is the 30-minute uh, chart. And that's a uh, TD9 count bottom. That completed just as we were coming on the air at 1 o'clock. That was bar number 9 that it completed out here. So now what we should see is price should make its way to the 12172 area. 12172 is its red oscillator and change line. If price can get above that, then its next battle is at 12201. If the uh, buyers can overtake the sellers that are sitting at the 12201 area, and by the way, there's both buyers and sellers at that price level, we then should see a move up to the 12277. But first things first, what the NQ's got to do, it's got to take on that red oscillator and change line, again, in the 12172-ish area out there. As price moves higher, should it move higher, that probably goes up to about 12173, 174 out there. The other time frames, such as the five-hour time frame, S and A to B equals CD to the downside. So we can draw ahead, go ahead and draw that in. It's also got a top that was a Rhodes momentum indicator top out here. So the A to B point would look much like this. We're going to take that line. We're going to add that to the C point now. And we're going to see, well, we're right there. So the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD from an intraday standpoint has been hit. Now what we want to see on these other intraday charts is a bullish reversal candle to confirm a buy the D point pattern. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this, combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits, this distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So, uh, we've got the uh, Dow trading down 118, uh, 117. The SP is up 38, NASDAQ 100. Down 217 and CNQ that we were taking a look at. So I did shift over here for the uh, to get those other intraday time periods, 10 minute, 15 minute out there. And uh, and what we want to take a look at here is really where the resistance levels are. Has any resistance level failed with that 30 minute uh, TD9 count bottom pattern? The answer is no. If you look at the 10 minute time frame chart, you'll see that that first battle's at the 12165 level, and we had 12170 on the uh, 30 minute chart for that oscillator and change line. So those are the levels that have to fail in order to suggest that this uh, bottom signal on the 30-minute time frame is going to have any kind of traction uh, whatsoever. So we don't have any proof as of that right now. But let's watch that 12,170 area should price be able to uh, take a run for that range. Let's go to our first question out here. The first question coming from uh, the Tiger's Den, MUK in the uh, Tiger's Den. Uh, uh, otherwise, if we were playing Texas Hold'em, we would say uh, we're going to muck. It. But let's go take a look at what uh, is the request. And the request was to go take a look at the oscillator and change line levels for the daily and the weekly time frame for Microsoft. So if you take a look at that, Microsoft uh, daily oscillator and change line is at 256.44. It's red. Red tells us now that it has a falling price oscillator below zero. That increases the odds that price will go test support. Support for Microsoft on a daily time frame is 245.55. Does it have to get down there? No, it just increases the odd when you are below a red oscillator and change line, such as the weekly time frame chart. The weekly time frame chart uh, this week uh, tested and rejected a red oscillator and change line. So that says price is pulling back and is going to go test that seventh wave bottom, that TD9 count bottom. It's already trading into that swing point from June 17th. We'll switch over to my other charts so we can go take a look at some volume characteristics out there. You didn't ask for the monthly oscillator and change line, but that's up at the 306.62 level. Price here is below the bottom of its bullish structured monthly profile. Microsoft is suggesting over time that it may want to make that move to the 211.94 area. 
The real key area of resistance here for Microsoft is that weekly oscillator and change line. Again, that's printed at the 260.27 level. Let's go switch over to the uh, black background charts, and then we'll go take a look and put Microsoft up on the uh, screen out here. Then we can take a look at uh, volume, so MSFT. And for Microsoft, on a daily basis, uh, what is price doing? So the top of that swing point is at 249.02. That swing point, the one that I'm referring to, is from the trading session of June 13th. June 13th, there was volume of 46 million shares. Today's pullback, even though you have a wide-ranging bar, it's on very light volume. You're at 16 million shares as we speak right now, so it's not likely that you're going to see 30 million shares traded between 1.30 and 4 p.m. out there. But price has not tested that level of support. Again, that's at 249.02. That's the area to watch. On a weekly basis, only Tuesday. Uh, but with regard to the week, the swing point low, the TD9 count bottom, that's the TD9 count bottom that formed on the uh, trading week that began June 13th, has volume of 184 million shares out there. And for the first uh, day and a half plus, we're at 37. So if we multiplied that times uh, another 37, we'd be at, uh, what, 74 million. That would get us to basically what equates to about four days. So you're going to be light. It's way light on a weekly basis. But price says still may go test the uh, swing point low out there. And that's at the 241.51. I think it's at 249.02 that will reveal to you and I whether or not price is going to make its way down to that uh, to the bottom of that uh, swing point. But what we do have is most certainly a light volume pullback. Meg Guppy inside the Tiger's Den wants to take a look at uh, a, a firm, AFRM. So uh, let's get that uh, get that going on the white background charts, but we'll stick here with the uh, black backgrounds, AFRM. And uh, uh, folks, I've got uh, nobody on deck with regard to questions out there. So now's a good time to either call in at 877-927-6648 or send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Of course, in the Tiger's Den, we'll take any and all pings out here. So we take a look at the firm holdings out here. We can see that uh, price ran into resistance at a descending trend line on its most recent rally. What price is doing right now, it's trading with inside its daily profile, and it's got very strong support at 2112. The reason why I said that it's got strong support is because the center and the bottom are both at that same level of 2112. So on a pullback, that area should hold. Doesn't mean that it will or guarantee, but it should hold. We take a look at a firm holdings on a weekly chart. What we see here is just a sideways consolidation. That sideways consolidation is between the bottom of its profile and top of its weekly profile. That's between the range of 1717 to 3130 out there. Let's go switch and take a look at those white charts, see if those white background charts have any additional signals that we can provide to you. Uh, and the answer is, um, well, right now on a daily time frame, we can see that price is testing a level of support. That is its green oscillator and change line. If a firm holdings can close back above the oscillator and change line today, that line is at 2415. That is actually a bullish outcome. When the oscillator and change line changes colors, and there certainly is a sell the D point pattern that formed a couple of days ago out here, well, and you've got a gap to the downside. So when it changes colors, and it will change from red to green, one is telling us that the price oscillator is at zero or just slightly above zero. So if price can pull back to that level, test and reject it, that is a bullish signal out here. That bullish signal would say, okay, well, you still have resistance at the top of its daily profile. That's 2753 number out there. And then you've got that descending trend line. The weekly time frame, so both the daily has got a nice Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. The weekly's got a nice Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern out there. So you just have this consolidation, really, that is being controlled by the weekly profile. So really, just to really narrow it down for you, Meg Guppy, is that uh, I'd watch that weekly profile level. So if you're looking to enter a position here, you would do it down at around the 1717 area, the bottom of that weekly profile. Will price get down there? Don't know, because at 2112, you've got the bottom. Remember, that's that strong support area. So if you're looking to get into it, maybe ladder in between 2112 and 1717 to get into a, a position out here. Now, on a monthly basis, if this can have a really nice rally, uh, you well, hold on a second here. The low of last month was 1640. The low of this month. 1624. I take back what I was going to say. The monthly time frame is confirming a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Now, it's only the 26th, but what you have here and what I was testing 
you have a key reversal bar. A key reversal bar comes, you need really three things for a key reversal bar to uh, generate a, a signal of a turn. One, you need to be in extended condition. Well, if we take a look at these charts here, we're certainly, or it is an extended, an extended condition to the downside. The second thing is the prior bars, high and low, needs to be exceeded. Well, that's done. And the third thing is you have to have a close, at least one tick in the opposite direction of that trend. That trend was to the downside. So as long as price in a firm at the end of the month closes above, so the open was 1836. If it closes at 1837 or higher, you'll have a You'll have a confirmed monthly, weekly, and daily chart for a firm holdings out there. So hope that helps you out. Uh, that was uh, Meg Guppy inside the uh, Tiger's Den. Let's go to Scott in Colorado. Oh, I tell you what. Scott, we're going to come back to you. I'll introduce you when we come back. I am going to a break here, but we're going to go out to Scott in Colorado Springs, which is just a beautiful area. And I believe we're going to talk to the Dow. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Now let's go out to Scott in Colorado Springs. Scott, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Good, Steve. How are you? I am very good. Thanks so much for calling. Thanks so much for asking. And you want to talk about the Dow, I believe. Uh, tell me how I can best help you. Yes, great to talk to you again. Your uh, write-up on the Dow was 100% quality, just like everything else you do. Well, thank I you. I appreciate you sending it out. My pleasure. My question, my question is, is how do you see if what 
If what you see happening in the Dow happens, do you see that affecting the other indices? Absolutely. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I think that the uh, – so, folks, if you, if you had had a chance to read the special report that we sent out, we sent that out, I believe it was on Sunday morning around 8 o'clock or so. Uh, go back and check your junk mail or what have you. Um, I think we're going to post that to the uh, homepage of TFNN. So uh, for those that maybe uh, just can't find it, they'll be to, able to see the link to it and to take a look at that report. But I would uh, expect that it would affect all markets. Uh, a couple of the questions that came in, maybe kind of what you're alluding to, Scott, the questions were, well, what do I think would perform the best out there? And, and you know, that I don't know. I, I don't know if that was your question. Um you know, and I think we just I think you just have to kind of take a look at the indices or maybe if we do get that, maybe you spread a long trade in between the different indices out there. So, um, sure. you know, I don't, I don't know if that was your question, but I have gotten that question probably most often out there as to what I would see as the best places to, uh, you know, to, t to take a long trade. Was that was that a question that you had? No, actually not. I I just. When I first saw it, I thought, well, there's no way, you know, I, I've been following you for a long time, and I assumed that you didn't think there was any way that the Dow could go in one direction and the others went in the opposite right. direction. So I thought I just would just clarify with you to see if you saw everything being affected by by the Dow or by a higher move. Sure, sure. So, so the the answer the answer is I do. Let me see if I can uh, get this uh, set of charts up here on the screen. Uh, if you give me just a moment, where would I put those? It'd be indices weekly. Uh, I don't know if that's what I wanted. Oh well. Well, that's okay. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get what I uh, we're gonna, that's not exactly the tab I was gonna open, but that's okay. It shows the same thing out here. So the first thing, uh, you see, if you're watching this on Tiger TV or inside the Tiger Center, you're going to see the weekly charts for the primary indices out here. What I want you to notice is that in the case of the Dow, price is above its uh, oscillator and change line. And that's that red line. That's at the 31.618 level. Now, what I want folks to understand when they take a look at this is, uh, one, that price has not been above the oscillator and change line in all of 2022. That was until last week. Those of you that listen to the show know that I like to see a two-bar confirmation of above of price above resistance or price below support. So, Scott, uh, the uh, the update that I sent out uh, remains in effect unless we see a close below that red oscillator and change line on a weekly basis. Right now, that's printed at thirty-one six eighteen. Pulling back and testing that area and rejecting it would be a nice thing if it does that. Doesn't have to do that. Um, but on the weekly base, in the weekly base, you can see the confirmed road momentum indicator bottom signal. That was about four or five weeks ago. The other charts out here, the other weekly charts, we can see that the S&P closed above its oscillator and change line last week. That is being tested as we speak right now. The NDX 100, again, closing above it. It's about 11,974 on the weekly time frame chart. The Russell 2000 is actually, the, from a weekly perspective, Scott, is the strongest of those four. And what I mean by that, well, first, all four of them have roads meant to indicator bottom patterns out there. The NDX also has a TD9 count bottom. And we take a look at the uh, Russell 2000 out here. It hasn't really budged from a weekly standpoint compared to the other um, indices out here. Let me make sure I've got my data feed done properly. Yeah, I do. So uh, the Russell's held up pretty well. The semis, they closed above their oscillator and change line. They have a confirmed by the D point pattern. That was confirmed with the bullish piercing candle from back in the week that uh, ended July the 8th out there. And again, price above its oscillator and change line. The transports, they're testing the oscillator and change line right now. The NASDAQ composite, it's above it. The New York Stock Exchange is just testing it. So the New York Stock Exchange is the only one to not to have closed above the oscillator and change line out there, but it's really the top four that I'm taking a look at. So as long as price is able to maintain and stay above those levels, then the outcome that I had identified is a very likely outcome out there. Does that make sense? Totally. Totally understand. And it's beautiful how how you how you find everything lining up. And it's kind of like, okay, if this happens, go. If that happens, don't go. Yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah, it's just, a, and, and the semis as well. So, you know, if we take a look at the semiconductors, and I'll just expand the chart out that way everybody's looking at the exact same thing, Scott. 
what we can see here, let me pull this back just a tad, we can see that we really have the same condition, which is that in all of 2022, the uh, semis have been below the oscillator and change line. That was until last week. And really, even though it's pulling back, it's a slight pullback. I haven't seen what the volume is on the SMHs today out there. But, uh, you know, typically the uh, semis, the NASDAQ and the Russell 2000 are the ones that lead the markets higher out there. Um, but in this case here, um, if we do get this two month rally, what this is really telling me, Scott, and I'll go over here. I'm going to switch. Yeah, any, any questions about these charts here before I switch pages for you? No, sir. Okay. So we the, the, we could get a substantial rally in the uh, Dow. And the reason would be, or any rally that we get in this marketplace, is really more likely a symptom of global capital flows. And so when we take a look at the global capital flows, as soon as I get back here, that's really this chart here. And what we can see, and this is this is this is perhaps the most fundamental, and we're taking a look at the technical aspect of it, thing to understand. And that's this. If you go back to the 2000 highs, right where my cursor's at, what was going on was capital was fleeing Europe, and that capital was coming into the U.S. It was in the U.S. dollar. It was in U.S. stocks. It was anything that was U.S. It was in real estate back then. It was anything that was U.S., and that was capital that was flowing here. Really, capital has been flowing from Europe into the U.S. ever since 2008 as well. But what's really important is last month, price took out the uh, 2017 levels. We're down at about par, just slightly above par right now. But the point that I wanted to make is there's really nothing from a swing, uh, a swing point standpoint or anything to really stop the euro from headed back to $84. Now, that would be the closing low. The actual low itself Ba uh, back in the uh, uh, 2000 uh, time period was at uh, 0.82, and that's likely the target. So with price below this area, uh, European capital is fleeing. We can see that it's moving at the U.S. dollar index out there, and at some point in time, it's going to bleed itself into U.S. equities. And I'm referring to in 2022 out here. Um, and so if we're going to get that uh, rally, that two-month rally, not just a two-week rally, it's likely going to be a result of this out here. Um, and it could turn into even more than that, but that's, uh, you know, so it would be the global capital flows out there. So that's something else for us to take a look at. And I know you watch currencies, and so you watch the euro. So that's something that you yourself can take a look at. Sure. <clears throat> like I said, yeah. Steve, fantastic as always. I love your work. Well, thank you. Thanks for the compliments. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for calling. Always good to hear from you. And uh, have a great day in uh, Colorado Springs. Um, you too, Steve. Great talking to you again. You bet. That was Scott in Colorado Springs. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be back in just a few. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstat has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro Dollar, Pound Dollar, Aussie Dollar dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Let's go to uh, some of our questions. We've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six that are in the queue. So let's get to those. First one is coming from Mike Kay in the uh, Tigers Den. Let's take a look at two symbols, NVIDIA and Mosaic. So if we take a look at NVIDIA, Mike, you can see the confirmed sell the D point pattern. Uh, it formed a nice uh, Rhodes Mint indicator bottom. That was your A point. Your B point was when price got up to the top of the uh, profile. That was resistance. And your C point was as price pulled back to its bullish structure profile. That's your C point. So it makes more than a one to one A to B equals CD. It uh, confirms that pattern with that three river evening star pattern. And now what price is doing is price is testing the center of its uh, really bearish structured profile out here. So that level, the center of the profile, is at uh, 166.72 uh, is what it looks like. Yeah, 166.72. The top is at 181.44. So your next levels of support, if price closes below the 166.72 level, then Mike, what price should do is go target that oscillator and change line, 161.50 or thereabouts. If price closes below that red oscillator and change line, Mike, then that's telling you that what price wants to do is get back to test the bottom of that profile. It's a large profile, 148.33. Now, if that is what is unfolding, what you want to know is you want to know the volume on the July 5th candle session out there. And I'll tell you what that is. The July 5th candle session has 65 million shares. If price breaks through these other support levels and is targeting that July 5th level, you want to see price pulling back and test that area on less than 65 million shares out there. The weekly time frame, I see a confirmed by the D point pattern. Uh, a was up at the uh, high from back in November 26 of uh, 2021. Your B point out here was the uh, bar number eight of the TD9 count that did lead to a nice little rally out there. And then uh, your C point was out here uh, April 1st. It confirms the buy the D point. It does, it looks like at least once, if not twice out here or three times when you had that nice little bullish hammer candle uh, from three weeks ago. Now what price is doing, it's dealing with its uh, oscillator and change lines. It's very much like uh, we took a look at Scott and I, the indices out here. NVIDIA on a weekly basis has done the same thing. If NVIDIA can end up the week above its oscillator and change line at 168.47, that will be slightly bullish. Now would suggest a run up to the 191.64 level. So I don't know which way this is going to turn out. So far, you're pulling back with 26 million shares. It's going into a trading session that had volume of 76 million and 70 million shares. Uh, that's uh, these two trading sessions here from uh, June, July 20th and July 19th. So it does appear that price is pulling back on light volume and should find support at that 161.50 if it doesn't really already here at this uh, 166 and change level out there. But watch that weekly oscillator and change line. If price does continue lower, takes out the uh, lows uh, that have formed this uh, bottom pattern, then 134.59 is where you'd be looking. That was NVIDIA. The second request was Mosaic. MOS is the ticker symbol out there. And as we take a look at it, uh, as soon as this populates out here, give us a moment. We've got Mosaic is going to be in bar number eight of a TD9 count. 
So you liked yesterday, Mike, because price closed above the top of its daily profile. And today you're above it. Price has pulled back, tested, and rejected that level. But this does suggest that a short-term top could or should form in mosaic between today and Thursday. Remember, that top can form on bars eight. You have to have bar number nine complete no matter what out there. But a higher high on the bar following bar number nine could be the topping signal. Does not mean that it will top. It just means that you've got one of those present. If it does not top, then what we're looking for is a move up to 6074. So certainly worth keeping an eye on. On the weekly time frame for Mosaic, now at the bottom, uh, the uh, daily time frame did form a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom, a wave number seven, that's letter G bottom out there. And now you're in an A to B equals C to the upside. If you did see a bearish reversal candle, that would give you a short term top. Forget about the TD9 counts. We don't have that as we speak right now uh, today. Um, in fact, if anything, uh, what Mosaic did was it took out its cell, the D-point pattern that formed on July 22nd. That certainly was a dark cloud cover candle. That was the completion of at least the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. So this may be telling us, because it just simply negated that session in one bar, that maybe this is Mosaic is just on a, a run to the upside out there. So possibility. We look at the weekly time frame chart. Price is inside a bullish structured profile. It's above the center of that. It closed above it last week. It's above it this week. That suggests that what price wants to do is make a run for 54.78 to 55.77. So Mike K in the Tigers Den, I hope that helps you out. Thanks much for the request. Satish wants to take a look at Alcoa. Ticker symbol there is double A, beep, beep, MCO. So let's go take a look at the Alcoa, see what it is doing, which is really just consolidating Satish with inside its daily profile. Price today got up to that level. That's at 47.96. It got up there two days ago, tested and rejected that area. So that's a level you'd like to see price close above. If it does close above it, then the signal to you and I would be that price should go target 54.67. 54.67 is the weekly oscillator on change line out there. The daily has a nice roads momentum indicator bottom, but again, it's just led to a consolidation. So you know where your sellers are located. That's easy to see. That's at 47.96. Again, if you can clear that out here, then what you're looking at is that run to 54.67. If you're in this and you're a bull, what you'd really like to see is for that uh, high of three days ago to not get taken out until Friday. Because if it does get taken out, then you've got a TD9 count uh, pattern to uh, deal with out there. So Alcoa looks good. Got a nice daily bottom. Does not have a weekly bottom, but price is above the uh, center of that. Uh, is it? No, it's not above the center of the weekly profile. Stevie, wake up here. It's testing the center of its weekly profile, and that's at 47.95. Price needs to close above that to then suggest that move to 53.54. So even though I screwed up that last part just slightly out there, I hope that helps you out, Satish. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Next question comes from Wanda R. Wanda writes in, can we take a look at the Canadian dollar, Swiss franc currency pair? Wanda, I wish I could. And I don't know why my system is giving me trouble when I try to pull up that specific currency pair. I can pull up the Canadian dollar, U.S. dollar. I can pull up the Swiss franc, U.S. dollar. I should be able to pull up that currency pair, but I can't. So what I will do is uh, when the show is over, I'll see if I can get that fired up, try to figure out why I can't get it fired up, which makes no sense whatsoever, and then I'll send you a chart. If I don't send you something, well, I'll just send an email to say, I'm sorry, I couldn't get to it. But thank you for taking the time to write in. Hopefully, I can resolve that issue on my end. Next question comes from David H. in Tomball, Texas. Dave wants to take a look at LNG. So let's go get LNG fired up on our screen out here. It says trading range, looking for the TD9 and OUL. Do I see any stock? Do I see this stock exceeding and trading above the recent high of 149.42? Well, you're in bar number eight as price goes up and tests that TD9 count top. That's what David is asking about. He's asking about the high from June 7th. That high was 146.35. Actually, he's asking about a higher high than that. Um, Okay, so now that we pull it back, we can see where he's taking a look at. But what's really important for David, for you, for I, is that LNG is in bar number eight as it's testing a TD9 count top that formed on June 7th. Now, just out of curiosity, we want to understand what the volume matrix looks like. And um, that goes like this. That swing point, that was the one from the day of June 7th, did volume of 1.7 million shares. Today, you're up with 3 million shares already. Okay. So price is going to go test that level. The swing point that you're asking about, I believe the swing point that you're asking about. No, that's not it. Well, I guess it is. You say 149.44.
But the uh, swing point that I show on May 4th, that high out there was 150 even Steven. Nonetheless, that had 3.6 million shares. You're trading into that swing point with volume. So it does look like that high is going to uh, get tested, but that could be the move of a move, and that could be your TD9 count top that comes into play come the Thursday. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So Ray in Sarasota is asking about Nordic American Tankers, NAT. His question really is, will Nordic American Tankers pull back into the 220, 225 range? And, uh, Ray, it looks like uh, the 229 area is definitely game. The reason is that we look at the daily time frame chart, you've got a TD9 count top. Now, you've got an inside day today. And, so, and volume is light. So far, the pullback is with about 1.4 million shares. When it made that TD9 count top, it did it with a volume of 4 million shares. So you've got a light volume pullback. But because you've got that top, price and that oscillator and change line should test each other. Now, that could set up the C point of an A to B equals C to the upside. Again, that's printed at 229. The top of the daily profile is at 222. So those would be the two targets of the downside that you were looking for. I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for being patient and waiting to the end of the uh, show. But actually, you just sent that in at about 135. We've got two requests in the Tiger's Den. One's to take a look at Google. Let's take a look at uh, Google. Here. I don't know that we'll get to Apple, but we'll certainly try. That's for MKC and Google. As soon as this loads up, 
I'm on API on my other charts. What you've got with Google is Google is going and testing. It's now trading below the bottom of its bullish structured daily profile out there. So let me get those other charts fired up here just to try to understand the volume aspect. So it's trading into a bullish hammer candle. That was the hammer candle that formed on May 24th, which did 60 million shares. You're pulling into that hammer candle with only 16 million shares right now. But if price closes below 106.40, even if with with its light, even if it's with light volume, price still may go down and test that 102.21 level. Price is below. You don't see it here, but it's below the bottom of its uh, weekly profile as well. And uh, the next level of support would be 9797. That's on the monthly time frame. So 101.50 to 97.97 is your real support area for Google. What I will do is put uh, Apple's charts up on our screen here. We're going through a break, but uh, MKC, you should be able to see Apple's charts out there. Hopefully. You'll be able to follow along, but it does look like Apple's on its way back to about 149.61. That's its oscillator on change line out there after completing a sell the D point pattern. Folks, stay tuned. Your favorite polar bears up next. After that, Tom O'Brien will take us on home. I'll be back with you tomorrow on wonderful Wednesday. Have a terrific Tuesday, folks.